Hello, this is Brian Choi, Managing Partner and CEO of the Food Institute. We're here at Nax 2024. So much activity, it's super exciting. I have here with me Darren Pickett, Chief Global Client Officer of Acosta Group. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Brian. Good to be with you today. Really looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, me too. So let's dive right into it. Let's talk about the consumer. So where is the consumer today and how has the consumer evolved and what can we expect in 2025? Yeah, the, the consumer's evolved significantly. If I go back to a pandemic, obviously the consumer was spending time at home. That shopper though, as we come out of the pandemic, has been faced with a lot of challenges, primarily in stretching their income uh, in the marketplace. You know, inflation has gone higher, cost of living has increased, uh, gas prices have gone up, and that has put a tremendous impact on their spending ability. Shoppers today have to figure out how to stretch those dollars in a way that they previously didn't have to do for food and consumer products in the marketplace. That could mean trading down into lower price items, it could mean trading out of certain categories, or even trading into new channels. You see migration from traditional grocery channels into retailers like Walmart and the Mass Channel. You're also seeing growth in convenience stores as well, and I know we're going to talk a lot about convenience stores. Yeah. Well, this, this channel, the C-Store channel, has been super interesting as I've been seeing different different concepts come up across the nation. Sure. Um, actually, I'm a big fan of C-Stores myself. Um, and so talk to us, like, what's really driven this, this growth in C-Stores? Uh, what are the drivers? And my follow-up follow question, is how important is it for manufacturers and operators to have an omni-channel strategy which includes C-Stores? Yeah, I, first of all, an omni-channel strategy is really important because the fact that shoppers today shop at so many different outlets yeah. and they've got a lot of different choices both on the physical and digital shelf. So you have to have a holistic strategy as a manufacturer to get the product to the shopper wherever they want to buy the product. And one of the places that they want to buy the product is in convenience store. And what I love about this channel is the convenience channel has really reinvented themselves. Uh, and what I mean by that is it used to just be selling uh, products made in categories like cigarette, alcohol, tobacco, beverages. Now what they've done is they've created all kinds of different options. And if you look behind me, freshly prepared foods in a convenience store is one of those reinventions. That product, those products were not uh, previously available. So products that somebody could quickly go in if they were snacking, they were taking their kids to a soccer game that I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, now they can go in and get that, which really has, I think, driven traffic yeah. and excitement into the individual stores and the convenience store channel. I love shopping at a convenience store today. Yeah, it's one of the primary reasons that I, I go to a C-store is just the quality of prepared and even freshly made meals. It's really become a destination. Yeah. I never thought I, I would I would actually say that like C store is becoming a destination. It's truly become a destination. So much to see, and um, and so as a follow up question. Well, the other thing too is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian, the quality of food yeah. in a convenience store now is awesome. Yeah. I mean, some people historically may have driven through a fast food restaurant to get. Uh, a meal for their families or their kids on the go. Now people are going in because the food quality continues to improve. Yeah, at a price point that's probably point. more competitive, right? Exactly. Wow, it's, yeah. it's really amazing. So um, as a follow-up question, um, as a consumer and manufacturers have, have you know, seen this channel evolve, how has Acosta adapted its strategy you know, to really accommodate the, the changes in consumer and manufacturers? So for Acosta Group and all the brands that we have inside Acosta Group, the foundation of what we start with is the consumer and the shopper. So if we know what the consumer's challenges are, what they're looking for, what their behavior is today, but more importantly, we look at our research and we've got a panel of over 40,000 shoppers and we ask them, tomorrow, what are your challenges going to be? What are you going to be looking for? Um, how do we connect your shopping needs with the brands that we represent? So we start with the lens of the shopper, and then we take a step back and say, what capabilities do we need to build inside the Acosta Group to be able to make that connection? Our reason for being is to help connect shoppers with the brands that they love. And so to do that, you have to have the right capabilities from where the product is produced to ultimately where the product is purchased. And when we look at that and build the capabilities, we can accelerate the growth both for our clients and for our retailers and really satisfy the needs of the shopper. Yeah, super interesting. Um, when I came up to the booth, I saw just how large this booth is. 
and one of the things as, as I'm spending more uh, more time with the Acosta team, you guys have a concept of end-to-end -end sure. solutions, right? And so, talk to us about how um, either emerging brands and mega brands, like what advantage is is it to have an end-to-end -end solution like you're providing today? Well, I think we're uniquely positioned because we have created an end-to-end -end solution that's unique in the marketplace. We can take a brand no matter where it is sold in a store, any category, and be able to drive that product on their point in their life cycle, whether a uh, innovative brand, a mature brand, and help them get through the category to the shopper anywhere in the store. And another good example of this is right behind us. I mean, you can see the way the booth's laid out, we've got products in HBC categories, we have products in beverage and uh, grocery categories, and then we have fresh prepared. So when we go into the retailer, we can help the retailer with an end-to-end -end solution because that's the way the shopper shops. Right, absolutely. And at the end of the day, you're essentially making making the cost of, 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 of bringing product to shelf much more affordable, right? We are. Yeah. One of the great things that we can do because of our infrastructure inside the Acosta Group is we can represent and take products to market 30% yeah. less than what a manufacturer can do it themselves, which means if the shoppers are struggling to get value, yeah. they can reinvest those dollars back into things that will help improve the shopping experience, whether it's more promotions, pricing, innovation, or even reallocating the dollars in the way that they go to market and their structure. Right. Um, my last question, Darren, is um, are there any specific solutions that you'd want to highlight um, here in, in, at Next 2024? Anything about an urban strategy or or anything that you'd like to highlight? No, I'd love to talk about the urban strategy. Yeah. So in every metropolitan market, the larger ones, 13 of them, we actually have vans. And what we do is we look at the urban market because of the concentration of uh, population in those markets. And we've taken bilingual individuals in certain areas like the five boroughs in New York, we've put them behind vans with product in there, and we actually can go up and down the street, whether it's in a convenience store like we're talking about today at Nax or a bodega and help them seed product in there and get product to outlets that historically CPG brands had a really hard time getting to. And again, why are we doing that? Because there's a lot of shoppers there that are looking for the brands that we have relationships with and it becomes that extra mile of being able to provide more products to more shoppers in highly concentrated areas. So I love this capability that we have and we've built out. Awesome, well there you have it. This is Brian Choi, Managing Partner and CEO of the Food Institute. Darren, thank you for spending time with us today. Brian, thank you so much. Good to be with you.